Now let's move to section B. What could be the possible treatments for a patient exhibiting ADA deficiency? So let us check the chapter. It is applications in biotechnology, biotechnology and its applications. It comes here, the gene therapy. Hope you can see. So the question is, what could be the possible treatment for patients exhibiting ADA deficiency? Let's see what could be the possible treatments. So you can see it here. The first clinical gene therapy you see here. It was given in 1990 to a four-year-old girl with adenosine deaminase deficiency. That is ADA deficiency. Please learn the term adenosine deaminase deficiency. So let's learn this in details. It will help you for answering some other questions. This enzyme is crucial for the immune system to function. So, in, uh, the disorder is caused due to the deletion of the gene for adenosine deaminase. You got it. What is the reason for the deficiency? It is due to the deletion of the gene for adenosine deaminase, the enzyme. Now, in some children, ADA deficiency can be cured by bone marrow transplantation. Here comes the answer to our question. So, it happens by bone marrow transplantation. One answer is bone marrow transplantation. In others, it can be treated by enzyme replacement therapy. So, how this enzyme replacement therapy is done? In which functional ADA is given to the patient by injection. So, often this enzyme is injected to the patient. But the problem with both these approaches is that they are not completely curative. These are temporarily, temporary measures that uh, marrow like uh, replacing the bone marrow or injecting an en enzyme will not be a complete cure. It lasts only for a short time. As a first step towards gene therapy, lymphocytes from the blood of the patient are grown in a culture outside the body. So this can be a cure, right? The lymphocytes from the blood of the patients can be grown in a culture outside the body. So that can be done. And then what is done? This functional uh, ADA complementary, that is ADA hybrid DNA. The DNA or the uh, complementary recombinant with the ADA using a retroviral vector. Here we are using retrovirus as the vector using this retroviral vector it is then introduced into this lymphocytes the lymphocytes which we have taken out then these lymphocytes cultured with this retroviral vector with the complementary adna ada uh, dna then it is returned to the patient so now the patient's body is having lymphocytes with ada gene however uh, the, these cells are not immortal you know, lymphocytes have a period of duration period of lifetime so after that the lymphocytes may uh, die so again this lymphocytes has to be um, cultured and uh, returned to the patient so the patient requests periodic infusion of such genetically engineered lymphocytes now because uh, this we are doing after the uh, after the patient has grown to a, to a certain age if it is done at the embryonal stages, it should be a permanent cure. The same process, if you do at the embryonal stage, then all the lymphocytes will get the uh, complementary DNA, like uh, this recombinant DNA with ADA, and so that it will be a permanent cure. So this is about uh, gene therapy. Now, now, our question is actually, what treatment can be given? So what are the treatments which we give here? One is um, bone marrow transplantation. The other one is enzyme replacement therapy and the next one is gene therapy, you have to write as gene therapy where the lymphocytes, you have to write the sentence where the lymphocytes of the blood is um, taken out and cultured where the ADA complementary cDNA is inserted using a retroviral vector and then it is inserted back or infused back to the patient's body. So these are the three possible treatments. Clear? Let's move on to the next question. Where is sporopollenin present in plants? State its significance with reference to its chemical nature. So sporopollenin, it is uh, regarding the pollen grains, the outer X sign of the pollen grain where a chemical named sporopollenin is found. 
so it is from that chapter let's see what is its significance reference to its chemical nature let's uh, find the answer chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants garden sporopollenin it comes here the hard outer layer called exine is made up of sporopollenin which is one of the most resistant organic material known it can withstand high temperature so where is it, uh, sporopollenin found we have written and then its significance it's the most resistant organic material known it can withstand high temperature and strong acids and alkali no enzyme that degrades sporopollenin is so far known and pollen grains are well preserved because of the presence of sporopollenin clear that is these are their significance next question refer to the given below diagram you can see the diagram of replication fork rewrite the structure as a replication fork and label the parts write the source of energy for this replication so let's take the chapter molecular basis of inheritance where we learn about the replication so we'll take the replication part you have the same diagram in your textbook yeah you can see the diagram the replication for so you have to exactly learn the diagram with all the uh, directions like 5 prime 3 prime end uh, which are the template strands where the continuous synthesis and discontinuous uh, lagging strand and uh, okasaki fragments newly synthesized strands everything you have to label and the direction is mandatory that is uh, it starts from 5 by 5 dash to 5 prime to 3 prime direction and here also 5 prime to 3 prime direction okay and now they have asked for the energy source where do they get energy for this here you can see in this paragraph deoxy ribonucleoside triphosphate serve dual purposes in addition to acting as substrates they provides energy for polymerization reaction the two terminal phosphates in deoxy nucleoside triphosphates are high energy phosphates same as in the case of ntp so deoxy ribonucleic acid triphosphates that is like dn atp dn CTP deoxy ribonucleoside triphosphate it can be adenosine triphosphate or cytosine triphosphate or guanine triphosphate or thymine triphosphate like this okay so these triphosphates in that the two terminal phosphates in triphosphates are high energy phosphates and they provide energy next question name the genus of baculovirus that act as a biocontrol agent in spite of being a pathogen justify by giving three reasons that make it an excellent candidate for the job so microbes in uh, human welfare let's take the chapter in microbes in human welfare chapter as the question is something regarding the biocontrol agent we shall take the uh, subtitle biocontrol agent yeah here microbes as biocontrol agents so let's read the question once again Name the genus of baculovirus that acts as a biocontrol agent in spite of being a pathogen. Comes here, the baculoviruses are pathogens that attack insects and other arthropods. Yeah, they are pathogens. The majority of baculoviruses are used as biocontrol agents are in the genus Nucleopolyhedrovirus. So that is the answer to that question. Name the genus. Why these uh, genus or why these varieties are considered as the excellent candidate of the job these viruses are excellent candidate for the species specific narrow spectrum insecticidal application that is they have very narrow spectrum of it attacking that is they will be attacking only a specific spectrum of species so we can uh, use it particularly for that species with the guarantee that they will not attack the other uh, species that is the beneficial species there will be some beneficial insects or beneficial arthropods so these nucleo nucleopolyhedrovirus are species specific so they will be attacking only a particular species okay they have been shown to have no negative impacts on plants animals like uh, mammals birds fishes or even on non target insects so this is especially desirable when beneficial insert insects are being conserved to aid in an overall integrated pest management program we actually all insects are not the enemies of farmers because insects are very much essential for pollination so um, we can use this polyhedroviruses as a species specific biocontrol agent now move on to the next question The above graph shows species area relationship. Write the equation of the curve A and explain it. So let's 
check the chapter. The chapter Biodiversity and Conservation. You have the same graph there in that chapter Biodiversity and Conservation. Let's check that graph. Species area relationship. Let's see under which topic it comes. Patterns of biodiversity. We have latitudinal gradients. Latitude affects the species richness in a particular area. And next species area relationship can be uh, interpreted or can be plotted in a graph and we get a graph like this okay now let's check the question we have to explain this curve a we have to explain this hyperbola a let's see how to explain it uh, this question can also be asked as the graph interpreted by Alexander von Humboldt so it can also be asked as a species area relationship graph uh, he observed that within a region, species richness increased with increasing explored area, but only up to a limit. Species here, you can see this is area. Area is getting explored and species richness is increasing, but up to a limit. In fact, the relation between the species richness and area for a wide variety of uh, organisms like plants, birds, bats, freshwater fishes, turned out to be a rectangular hyperbola. On a logarithmic scale, the relationship is, if you are just marking on a log scale, on a logarithmic scale, that is the second uh, slope which you see here. The relationship is a straight line described by the equation log s equal to log c plus z log a, where s is the species richness, a is the area, z is the slope of the line, that is the regression of the coefficient, and C is the y-intercept. And this formula is important, okay? For that, a rectangular hyperbola, you get this formula. S is equal to CA, the whole CA raised to Z. Let's come back to the question. They have asked to write the equation of curve A. So, you have to write the equation, this equation, equation of curve A. This S equal to CA raised to Z. And then you have to explain this part. You got it? We have few more um, information given here. Let's go through that too. It, will help. it may help you. Uh, ecologists have discovered that the value of Z, that is the slope of the line, okay, the Z value, mostly lies in the range of 0.1 to 0.2, any of the taxonomic group in that particular region. That is, uh, if it is a plant in Britain or the birds in California or mollusk in New York State, the slope of regression, Z, the slope of the line, will be always in the range of always found to be in the range of 0.1 to 0 0.2 now uh, here they are talking about a particular region okay now if you analyze the species area relationship in very large areas like whole continent you will find that the slope of this line z will be more steeper and the range will be like 0.6 to 1.2 example they have mentioned here fruit being fruit eating birds and the mammals in the tropical forests of the different continents the slope is found to be 1.15. They have asked a question here, what do steeper slopes mean in this context? So in this context, steeper slopes means uh, in a species area relationship, if you check in this huge continent, the number of species will be increasing in a faster rate than the uh, area we explored. Here actually, the area here in the small area, the area is getting, the, we said that there is a limit, right? But when we explore the huge continents, the area also increases, but the species richness will be increasing more. Like the value which we get on our species richness will be more. So we could go, we could plot it as a steeper slope because the value for that, the species richness will be high when compared to the value of the area explored. Let's move on to the next question. How does over exploitation of beneficial species affect biodiversity? Explain with the help of one example. Let's see. Over exploitation of beneficial species. Under the heading causes of biodiversity losses, we can see few causes given here. Um, there are four major, major causes. It is mentioned as evil quartet. Okay, And one is habitat loss and fragmentation. The second one is over exploitation. The third one is alien species invasion. And the next one is co-extinction. So here the question is regarding over exploitation. Let's read the question once again. How does over exploitation of beneficial species affect biodiversity? So it is one of the cause of loss of biodiversity. Okay. Now, what is over-exploitation? Humans have always depended on nature for food, shelter, then our need turns to greed. It leads to over-exploitation. So, the example, example here is very, very important. Many species extinction. So, over-exploitation lead to extinction of the species in the last five years. Example, Stellar's sea cow 
passenger pgm where due to the over exploitation by humans remember these examples in your mind you may get this in one word also or they will be asking the other way around the question the other way around um, the extinct, uh, extinction of stella c cow and passenger pgm what what caused their ex, uh, extinction or what is the cause of their extinction yes it is over exploitation there presently many marine fish populations around the world are over harvested endangering the continued existence of some commercially important next question coming to section c although a prokaryotic cell has no defined nucleus yet dna is not scattered throughout the cell explain molecular basis of inheritance the same statement is given there in your textbook let's read that chapter molecular basis of inheritance hope you also have taken your textbook uh, it comes here in prokaryotes such as e coli though they do not have a defined nucleus the dna is not scattered see read the question once again the same although a prokaryotic cell has no defined nucleus its dna is not scattered throughout the cell explain they are not scattered dna is not scattered throughout the cell the reason is the dna being negatively charged is held with some proteins that have positive charges in a region termed as nucleoid so some proteins are holding them together the dna is in nucleoid is organized in large loops loops held by this protein so in the case of eukaryote it is histone the nucleosome in the case of prokaryotes some other horn, uh, proteins are holding them close next question a cross was carried out between two pea plants showing that the contrasting traits of the height of the plants the result of the cross showed 50 percentage parental characters let's work out the cross okay they have asked us to work out the cross with the help of a punic square So the question is the cross was carried out between two plants p plants showing the contrasting trait of the height of the plants see so height of the plants it is tall and dwarf tall these are the contrasting characters of height kya uh, usually what we take is one um, dominant homozygous dominant or purebred dominant plant that the other one as purebred a uh, recessive one but here the result then what would be the result it will be solely or completely 100 percentage tall plants that would be the result but here the question is the result of the cross showed 50 percentage of the parental characters there is 50 percentage of them shown tall and 50 percentage of them were short so in that case what should be the parent one of the parent should be heterozygous so let's take one parent as heterozygous or if what happens if both parents are heterozygous well, we try as both parents heterozygous if both parents are heterozygous then again we get it's not 50 percentage we get capital t capital t capital t uh, small t capital t small t small t small t so again it is not 50 percentage of parental characters right we are getting 3 is to 1 ratio so that is also not uh, abiding the rules given or the results given in the question now let's try it on the other way other way round that is one of the parent homozygous and the other one heterozygous so uh, recessive let it be heterozygous sorry homozygous recessive cannot be heterozygous children recessive it is always homozygous there are certain cases but here it is always homozygous and let's take the tall nature heterozygous nature and then we get capital t so they have asked you to do with the punnett square so if they specify or they have uh, particularly asked you to do with the punnett square please do with that now it is capital t small t small t small t capital t small t small t small t yes we get uh, 50% dwarf and 50% tall okay so we have taken one parent as heterozygous uh, tall and the other one as homozygous to homozygous recessive name the type of cross carried out yes if a cross is carried out with a homozygous recessive parent to find the heterozygosity of the parent then that cross is called as a test cross you have this in your textbook in the uh, principles of inheritance you have a pot a test cross you can refer that so if any cross is done with homozygous recessive to find if the other parent is homozygous or heterozygous then we get it, then we call it as a test cross now let's move on to the next question prior to a sports event blood and urine samples of sports persons are collected during drug tests why is there a need to conduct such tests name the drugs the authorities usually look for 
write the generic names of two plants from which these drugs are obtained. So you are uh, aware which chapter it is, human health and diseases. Let's move on to that chapter. Coming to the drugs, drugs and alcohol abuse. So they are asking for a drug where, uh, which is used by the athletes. Okay. Why is there a need to conduct such tests? Such test is conducted to check if the sports person has used any drugs or not. Name the drugs that the authorities look for. They are looking for the cannabinoids. So cannabinoids is used uh, are also being abused by some sports persons. And also this coca alkaloid. This is also used. Okay. And uh, so they have you ask the next question like write the generic name of two plants from these drugs are obtained then you can write the erythroxylum coca and uh, cannabis sativa cannabis sativa and erythroxylum coca see you see here they have given you it, this erythroxylum coca that is cocaine obtained from this plant interferes with the transport of neurotransmitter dopamine okay and uh, this cocaine is usually snorted and it uh, has a potent stimulating action on the central nervous system which causes increased energy yes, that's what the sports person needs next question uh, why is predation required in a community of different organisms chapter organisms and population let's see the interaction they're talking about predation so let's take that population interaction predation so let's read the question once again why is predation required in a community of different organisms? Why is predation required? Besides acting as a conduit of energy transfer across the trophic level. So they transfer the energy across the trophic level. That's one of the roles they play. Besides that, predators play other important roles. They keep prey population under control. They become, uh, see if this prey population is not kept under control, when certain exotic species are introduced in a geographical area, they become invasive and start spreading fast because the invaded land does not have its natural predators. If there are no predators, then uh, see if any invasive species comes, they are they don't have natural predators, they may grow. Okay, so predators are important to keep the population under control. Example for that is the uh, invasive cactus, the Procopia cactus, and uh, it was brought under control by introducing a uh, moths there the population of that cactus kept under control next uh, significance predators also help in maintaining the species diversity in a community by reducing the intensity of competition among competing prey species see if, if there are two three prey species and they are competing each other predators play a role in maintaining their diversity let's see how it happens in the rocky intertidal communities of American Pacific Coast, the starfish disaster is an important predator. In a field experiment, when all starfish were removed from an enclosed intertidal area, more than 10 species of invertebrates become extinct because they had interspecific competition. There were competition among them and many species became extinct. But so it was concluded or uh, it was assumed that only because of the removal of the predator from that part. Okay? So remember all these examples are important. Sometimes they may give you the questions with the examples. They will state the examples and ask you to write what happened here or what kind of relationship is maintained here or what interaction should be maintained here. Okay. So predation is, this, this example shows that predation is a, essential factor in maintaining the species diversity. Next question, explain birth rates in population by taking a suitable example. Write the other two characteristics which only a population shows but an individual cannot. So again the same chapter, come to the birth rate part under the heading population attributes. Here they talk about the birth rate. Uh, if in a pond there were 20 lotus last year through reproduction, 8 plants were added. So taking the current population to 28, we calculate the birth rate as 8 by 20 per capita birth. So it is 0.4 offspring per, lo uh, per lotus per year. That's how the growth birth rate increases. The second question is, write the other two characteristics which only a population shows but an individual cannot. Yeah, a population has certain attributes whereas individual organism does not. So, write other two characteristics. So, birth rate is one of the characteristics. The other characteristic is death, death rate. 
Okay. Another attribute characteristic of a population is sex ratio. An individual is either a male or female, but a population has a uh, sex ratio. Okay. And then sex ratio is one of the attribute, and then comes this age pyramids. Goes with the population, not with the individuals. And you have to write what uh, sex ratio goes for and what this age pyramid is. Precise explanation will do. Now, next question. Study the transfer section of human ovary given below and answer the questions that follow. You know, the same figure is there in your textbook, human reproduction. And name the hormone that helps in the growth of A, A to B, B to C. Follicle, growth of the follicle. FSH and uh, luteinizing hormone. Okay, follicle stimulating hormone and LH. Name the hormone secreted by A and B. So before it becomes, yeah, it uh, releases, it is estrogen. State the role of hormone produced by D. Graphene follicle and it becomes corpus luteum. The ovum has released corpus luteum, so it is progesterone. It will be progesterone and it helps in the maintenance of uterine endometria. Okay, because it's corpus luteum. Or we can see the release of ovum here. Plasmid is a boon to biotechnology. Justify this statement, quoting the production of human insulin as an example. So, uh, so how you have to explain this? You have to explain human insulin part, saying that without uh, discovery of plasmid, this cannot be happened, right? Uh, only if a plasmid is being incorporated with the human insulin gene and then allowed it to um, make new copies. So that is the that's how we get human insulin. So if there is no plasmid then this method of production of human insulin will not be happening. So you have to explain in that aspect. Now, when does a genetis, geneticist carry, need to carry a test cross? How is it carried? Uh, this will not be happening in your uh, board paper. Actually, a test cross twice they have asked. Anyway, let's see. Uh, there was a question here earlier regarding the test cross and again it is asked. So it will not happen in your board paper. But let's see what how does a test cross help a genesis? The chapter principles of inheritance you can see here um, just below this monohybrid cross. Here, there you can see it in a bowl letter given. Uh, to determine the genotype of a tall plant at F2. So, we do not know that tall plant carries uh, both the genes that is heterozygous or homozygous. So, to check if it is homozygous or heterozygous, men will cross the tall plant from F2 with the dwarf plant and then this is called a test cross okay so when does the genesis carry and how is it carried you have to write the cross in a typical test cross an organism showing a dominant phenotype is crossed with a recessive parent instead of self crossing usually in f2 generation we self cross it to know if uh, the generation or the offspring obtained is homozygous or heterozygous we can cross it with the homozygous recessive recessive parent that's how the test cross is conducted. Then section D, refer to the given below flow chart and show that shows the C waste treatment. So please take that uh, C waste treatment in uh, microbes in human welfare. Take that. Exactly the procedure of C waste treatment is mentioned here. So what's the first box given here? Primary treatment and uh, what as a result of primary treatment we get primary sludge and primary effluent. And that's sludge. We are just focusing on the effluent. Effluent is uh, subjected to secondary treatment and where it is sent to a large aeration tank. And what happens in the aeration tank? In the aeration tank, it is constantly agitated mechanically and air is pumped into it. So it is constantly agitated mechanically. And as a result of that, large flocks are formed. So you should know what are flocks. Flocks are masses of bacteria associated with fungal filament to form mesh-like structures. Okay. So this is important and these are aerobic microbes okay here aerobic digestion is happening now from the flocks next what is happening so uh, the flocks will be growing and a major part of this organic matter in the effluent will be uh, digested by these microbes and this what happens it reduces the BOD so in uh, in that large aeration tank tank due to the formation of flocks the BOD is reduced. You know what BOD is? In our pre previous uh, question paper solving video, we have clearly explained what the BOD is. And next, let's see. Uh, BOD and as a result of reduction of BOD, what are we getting? Once the BOD is reduced significantly, these flocks are allowed to sediment. So now it is passed into a settling tank. 
so it is passed into a settling tank where the uh, so DOD is reduced and in the settling tank sedimentation is happening and then next uh, after sedimentation what do we get we get actually activated sludge this, this sediment is called as activated sludge and then what is happening to that activated sludge they are um, again pumped back into the aeration tank to serve as the inoculum see a small part of the activated sludge is sent back to this aeration large aeration tank where it acts as an inoculum for the formation of uh, flock then here then this major part of the sludge is pumped into a anaerobic sludge digesters in anaerobic sludge digesters anaerobic uh, decomposition is happening where the bacteria and fungi anaerobically digested producing the biogas okay so let's see the question so uh, activated sludge anaerobic sludge digesters and from that we get the biogas what is the role of step a what is step a mechanically agitating it so what happens if any mechanically agitated this allows the vigorous growth of useful and aerobic microbes into flocks okay we have said what a b c and d in the given process then explain the process at step b anaerobic digestion so we have to explain what anaerobic digestion is happening um, other kinds of bacteria which grows anaerobically digest the bacteria and fungi in the sludge during this digestion bacteria produces a um, mixture of gases such as all these things left right okay then uh, what is the significance of low b uh, yeah, by reading this question, we get to know that in B, box B, we are supposed to write BOD. Significance of low B in the given process and how does it forms C, how the activated sludge is formed. Then, um, yeah, study the given diagram, given figure and answer the following questions. So, this figure, you know, uh, sex linked inheritance in Drosophila. Let's see that. Let's see it in detail. You can see red eyed female, white eyed male. Let's analyze the cross. And here, one from this, and uh, one from one X from father, one X from mother, and Y from father. So, this daughter, so this is daughter, this is son. The daughter is a carrier. Actually, only if both X gene comes. Uh, like carries that red eye only then the drosophila becomes red eye so this can be a carrier okay carrier daughter but the son has got red eye it is red eyed daughter uh, son this is carrier daughter how do you identify it is a daughter or a son this is xx and this is xy then uh, now let's see what happens in the f2 generation when this both crosses we get see uh, this red eyed this and this combines red eyed x red eyed x red eyed daughter female red eyed granddaughter this is grandchildren generation because we have we are considering them as parents this is parents so definitely they are f2 are grandchildren so red eyed granddaughter carrier granddaughter red eyed grandson and a normal grandson okay so red eyed son a normal son normal grandson let's see the questions identify a b c and d from the given figure let's see what is a here it is a yeah it is a carrier daughter red eyed gene is x gene is there in the daughter but it is not expressed and b red eyed son one x is there it will get expressed so it is red eyed son b and c yeah it is a y chromosome and d where is d x gene carry the red eye x gene okay carrier x what kind of inheritance is shown in this figure actually here it is crisscross inheritance the parent mother is having the red eye but in the next generation daughter is not getting the red eye and the son is getting so it is passing on from mother to son for sure son is getting no not daughter and from the son see the dot granddaughter is getting so it is crisscross now the significance state the significance of the inheritance in the above mentioned cross that is a crisscross cross see in this crisscross uh, variety of uh, system of cross we get to know like how uh, the genes are inherited see in the parent generation the mother has got the disease or some kind of um, any kind of disease or any kind of characteristics or traits that will be inherited to son it will not be seen in the female child. 
and then it is then in, uh, inherited to the grand daughter see mother to grand daughter if that trait is seen in father then it will be transmitted from father to daughter and then to grandson it will be inherited like that so that is the significance of uh, criss cross inheritance see the next question there was the or question what what would happen if the given if in the given cross if parent phenotype be reversed that is white eyed female and red eyed male respectively so if uh, the cross comes like this this red comes in the male and white eyed female so what happens this x comes here and this x would be inherited to the grandson so grandson will be <coughs> getting so uh, the criss cross inher inheritance means from mother to son to granddaughter father to daughter to grandson now section e coming to section e an experiment x provided evidence in support of y in this experiment four gases were circulated a b c and d in an airtight apparatus an electrical discharge from electrodes were passed at 800 degrees celsius the mixture of gases were passed through a condenser after a week the chemical composition of the liquid inside the apparatus was analyzed the results provided evidence through which y was more or less accepted so here an experiment x that provides the support to y so y can be a concept or a hypothesis or a theorem or a theory where which is supported by the experiment x and in that experiment four gases were released so you would have got what the experiment is yes in evolution the chapter evolution so let's see the experiment and then we'll come to the question so the chapter in chapter evolution the experiment they speak about is this experiment this is where four gases are released okay now let's see the question again check the question again identify the gases a b c and d okay so let's relate that uh, figure with the question an experiment x provided an evidence in the support of y so this is the experiment conducted by miller supporting the uh, theory saying that uh, theory proposed by opern and haldane that the first form of life could have come from pre-existing non-living organic molecules and that formation of life was preceded by chemical evolution that is formation of diverse organic molecules from inorganic constituents okay now in this experiment four gases were circulated and in an air tight apparatus an electric discharge from electrodes were passed at 800 degrees celsius so four uh, gases methane hydrogen ammonia and water vapor okay at 800 degrees celsius which theory of origin of life is supported by the above experiment yes this is the theory that is theory stating that uh, life have come from pre-existing non-living organisms then draw a diagrammatic representation of the experiment a so you are expected to draw this diagram miller's experiment what does a b c and d together produced in the experiment x so what is the product that's what they are asking uh, what is the product he observed formation of amino acids so the product here is amino acids you got it now explain three different ways in which natural selection can affect the frequency of a heritable trait in a population diagrammatic representation of the operation of natural selection on different traits that is stabilizing it can be stabilizing it can be directional or disruptive see here this graph these figures so in this figure uh, a medium sized individual is favored in a ecosystem so the phenotypes favored by the natural selection is coming over here so imagine that those that phenotype is medium sized individual okay and now this can lead to three different forms of uh, different types of natural selection okay in first way it is this is called as uh, stabilizing kind of uh, natural selection where this no other sized individuals will be growing only this medium sized individuals will be uh, growing up so it is like the peak is getting higher and narrower narrower means no other uh, individuals are growing up only this one so it goes okay so it is um, unidirectional no other chances are possible now the second one second possible is directional directional means it can be of two options 
either of medium sized individual or of some other sized individual it can be of uh, in the beginning there will be of two options and slowly it will be peak peak will be shifting towards one direction okay so both the both chances would be there and slowly it will be directed towards one direction that is peak shift towards one direction then next one is disruptive so here in this two peaks are formed two peaks are formed that is there are chances for two different traits you understand so this is what you have to draw and explain for the sum next question give reason why dna cannot pass into a host cell through the cell membrane so all these give reasons we'll check the answers in our textbook uh, dna cannot pass into a host cell through the cell membrane biotechnology transformation with recombinant dna dna is a hydrophilic molecule it cannot pass through cell membrane so it is hydrophilic the cell membrane is actually hydrophobic it has lipid molecules in it so it is hydrophobic so it will not allow this hydrophilic dna into it so in order to force then we have to make the bacterial cell competent okay dna is a hydrophilic molecule whereas the membrane is a hydrophobic molecule so as it has um, lipid molecules in it proteases are added during isolation of dna for genetic engineering while isolating genetic material see uh, since the dna is enclosed within the membranes we have to break the cell open to release dna along with the other macromolecules so dna is combined with the other macromolecules so rna is there proteins are there polysaccharides lipids are also there now this separating of all these things or dissolving of all these things can be achieved by treating the cells either bacterial cell or the plant or animal tissue with enzymes specific enzymes such as lysozyme if it is in the case of bacteria lysozyme cellulase plant cells chitinase fungus okay to um, dissolve the outer layer then these genes are uh, located along with the dna molecules intertwined with sorry intertwined with proteins so this can be uh, to remove the proteins we have to treat it treat it with protease proteins can be removed by protease so for each to remove to remove each um, material or each compound we have to use those specific enzymes to remove protein we use protease where do we do this to isolate the genetic material or the dna next one single recognition site is preferred in a vector that we have already discussed in one of the question paper about this and i'll show you where does it come here in order to link the alien dna vector need to have very few preferably single recognition sites for the commonly used restriction enzymes maintenance of sterile conditions in biotechnological processes we should maintain sterile conditions in biotechnological processes why maintenance it's the first part of this biotechnology under the heading principles of biotechnology genetic engineering and bioprocess engineering maintenance of sterile that is microbial contamination free ambience and chemical engineering process is to enable the growth of only desirable microbes so we are giving them with lot of uh, nutrient rich culture so if we are not careful for the growth of uh, desired microbe or desired eukaryotic cell any other cells which undesirable which is undesirable for our experiment may grow and spoil our experiment okay for that we have to maintain uh, sterile condition Gene codes resistance to antibiotics considered as useful selectable markers for E. coli cloning vector. Uh, this also we have uh, discussed detail in uh, sample the solution of sample paper one, where we have completely talk uh, discussed about uh, how this gene encoding is done with the help of antibiotic resistance, or why do we use antibiotic resistance there? Okay, it is clearly mentioned there. Uh, causative agents of HIV, AIDS, and COVID-19 belong to the same group of viruses. To diagnose and amplify the genetic material for the further study of COVID-19 virus, RT-PCR. The term RT-PCR is quite uh, familiar to all of us now. Uh, RT-PCR test is carried out. What does RT-PCR stands for? So we know what PCR is: polymerase chain reaction. And RT is reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. Okay. and the various steps of polymerase chain reaction technique it is directly given in your textbook amplification of gene of interest using pcr so all these um, steps you must mention with the diagram that is denaturation annealing extension and how it is getting amplified and a very important part of this is 
the use of thermostable DNA polymerase isolated from a bacterium thermos aquaticus that is TAC polymerase okay name the bacterium thermostable DNA uh, bacterium with thermostable DNA and uh, what is the polymerase DNA polymerase used there TAC polymerase and why do we use TAC polymerase why don't we use the other things because while this annealing process requires it, it this process is actually done under high temperature okay so that's why we use TAC polymerase here study the graph below related with menstrual cycle in females identify the ovarian hormone XY and this question also we have discussed in the previous sample paper it means this is a repeated question so this graph in the chapter human reproduction with the ovarian hormones and there the question was asked like ovarian, what's the role of ovarian hormones as well as the pituitary hormones so this part is very very important okay so you have to you can listen to those uh, discussions in the previous question paper solution also learn this part it's very very important read the given below figure and answer the question that follows so what phenomenon is represented in the above given figure so this comes under the chapter sexual reproduction in flower implants yes what phenomenon is shown here it is germination of pollen tube and the process of fertilization yes what is the path of entry of pollen tube the pollen tube pierces through the style and enter through the micropyle. Now we have to label the parts A to E. Exactly the same figure is given in your textbook. Look at the figure and uh, learn all the parts. Pollen tube, antipodals, polar nuclei, egg cell and synergy. Exactly the same figure. So uh, learn it. What will happen after entering of pollen into one of the synergies? So that part is here after entering one of the synergids the pollen tube releases and into the cytoplasm of synergid one of the male gametes fuses moves towards the eggs and fuses with its nucleus thus completing the syngamy forming the diploid zygote and by that we have come to the end of this question paper many of the questions have been are re repeated so uh, it means that those part can be asked in any different ways okay though it is repeated the questions they have asked is different so please go through well all the best children meet you in another session thank you